Hello, it's Kim Walters from K Walters at the Sign of the Gray Horse. I'm making this video as an extension to some research I've recently done on 18th century shoe buckles. You can find that article on my blog. I like to think of buckles as jewelry for your feet. And I'd like to show you some originals from my collection so that you can see the different variations of what was available in the time period as well as how to actually put them on your shoes. Shoe buckles over the century show changes in their design and size. From about the 1720 to the 1750s, the frame of shoe buckles slowly increased in size and were square, squarish, oblong, or circular. There was a flamboyant Rococo style introduced in the 1750s that reflected bolder, openwork pattern of scrolls engraved or cast into them. Buckle sizes continued to increase in size, reaching its peak in the absurd harness buckles that were deeply rounded to fit the arch of the foot, sported by the fox in the late 1770s. The size continued to increase in the 1780s and then gradually decreased until the 1790s in the turn of the century. Shoe buckles went out of fashion for a number of reasons that I discuss in my January article. And now I'll show you how to put your buckles on your shoes. I'm wearing a pair that were specifically made for me by Kevin Garlic Shoes. The shoe buckles that I will put on them are my reproduction Charlotte shoe buckles with the black diamond rhinestones. All of my buckles fit your usual commercial 18th century shoes on the market. What my buckles will not do is pierce the leather or the fabric. So you are going to need an awl to help you out with that and a pen to mark where your tongue and shape need to be on the buckle strap. So to start, you'll see that I have my buckle straps in a specific position. I'm going to have the tongue facing inward toward my other foot. You can see I've already put this one on. And so I'm going to pull the top strap up. I'm going to put the bottom strap through the shape. And I'm going to make sure that the shape is laying flat and I'm going to center it on my foot. I'm going to check this several times, but I'm also going to look underneath to see where I need to mark where my shape spikes are. And so I'm going to do this several times, ensuring that it's still centered on my foot and I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to mark it. Now, what you're going to see here, and this is key to keeping on your shape and, and into um, the leather or the fabric. I would normally possibly mark up here where the spikes are. However, I know that the fabric and the leather are going to stretch. And so I have marked clearly further down. And this is gonna give me that proper tension in order to keep the shape on. And so once you do that, and once you, and make your holes inside, you're going to then insert the shape spikes inside the fabric. There they go. And then you are going to take your top strap, which is facing your opposite way, and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to just make sure that there's the tension here, it's centered, and then you're going to go ahead and mark. I've personally marked right there because I've pulled my buckle strap over really, really far. I want it a little tight just to give me that tension. And I know that the fabric or the leather is gonna stretch. I'm going to insert the holes and then insert the tongue. And there you have it. There are many that do not like to have multiple holes in their buckle straps. I am one of them. However, I do like to wear my different types of buckles on my shoes. So I know that my Charlotte and Belle shoe buckles have different tongue and shape than the rest of my shoe buckles. And so I'd like to be able to wear them on my shoes. One thing I have found is that there are some shoe buckles that will cover those extra holes so that you don't see them. I wanted to make mention of the tongue and shape spikes. For several types of commercial or even um, custom shoes, you will see that the shape spikes may or may not be long enough to pierce the buckle strap. And in the case of these beautiful shoes, my shape has a hard time and then I get frustrated 
with putting it through. And you can see I put holes there and trying to put it through the buckle strap. I need to take the time to do it. However, if I am in a hurry and I want to get these things on and worn, there is a trick that you can use. And some shoes on the market come with Velcro. And you can put that underneath the bottom strap under here, as well as maybe something to help close it here just to keep it centered and on your foot. I think this might be helpful to some people who have issues with getting their shape spot through the buckle strap. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I do hope you like and share it with your friends and you can get to all of my research and to my Etsy shop www.kwaltersatthesignofthegrayhorse.com.